So how Patrick actually got into smoking was when I met him, the, he did grilling, traditional upstate New York barbecue at the Legion. And they would go up there and they would have these big grills and they would put on you know, all these chicken halves and there was smoke and it was 500 degrees and they'd pop it. And I kept tasting, oh, I'm going to go to barbecue. And it's like, that's not barbecue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. And then he'd go home to my part of the country, down to southern Kansas and down the Oklahoma border area, and he'd eat all this barbecue and he'd say, well, you know, they don't do this in upstate New York. And I said, yeah, it's because they don't do barbecue. Well, I finally talked him into one year, instead of just getting on I-70 and lead putting it down home, I said, let's go down the East Coast, all the way to Florida, and then we'll go from Florida, we'll go all, follow the Gulf Coast along, go through Louisiana, and then up to Kansas, that way. And we'll stop and we'll eat barbecue all along the way. And we did, we took almost two weeks, and we stopped at every little dumpy, divey place, preferably where it had uh, kind of a run-down garage-looking thing with his little homemade smoker out there and had sides and pie in the cooler kind of thing. And then I took him to, I'd already looked up the place on the internet, and I took him to Old Hickory Smokers in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and said, you know, if you did barbecue, right barbecue, wood smoke barbecue, you could have one of these luscious, beautiful barbecues on an 18-foot trailer. But you got to do real barbecue to get that. And that convinced him. <laughs> I said, you can have the best barbecue in the neighborhood. Everybody will, all the guys will be envious. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we bought a smoker. In fact, we bought two smokers. We call them twins. And we came back and we started smoking. And it was a tough learning curve for him because he didn't want to listen to what I was telling him how to do it. And so then we'd go home and he talked to the uncles and my father and um, they, my uncle, well actually my father was gone by then, he talked to my uncles and they'd say, well, you know, no, you got to do this, that, and the other, you're not doing it right, okay. So it was about a year and a half, two year learning curve. And finally, it, he, he was getting the hang of it. And then, once he really realized what, how you had to do it, then he got good at it. And then he kept getting better and better. And so, I made up rubs for him and sauces. Um, what I like, all the food here in the restaurant is what I like. Sorry, <laughs> my restaurant I get to choose. <laughs> so, um, and that's it. He became famous for his ribs and his pulled pork, and his, then then he didn't want to do Texas brisket because he really wasn't sure about that. And our nephew is from Texas. And he said, oh, it's so easy. And he's a submariner was stationed in Connecticut at the time. He says, oh, come to the house. I'll show you how to do it. So we went. And um, he showed him some tricks. He came back. And he still, no, I don't think so. So while he was gone to Watkins Glen to the antique car show one weekend, a friend came up and helped me. And we did brisket on the smoker. And then I put it on the menu. <laughs> so when he came back the next week, it was like, we are now serving brisket. And he said, we are? And I said, yeah, we are. <laughs> you don't have a choice. There's already a bunch of people that like it, so you have to cook some more. <laughs> so that's the story of the barbecue. That's the story of how he ended up with the... Uh, with the smokers now, and now he's getting really, really good at it.